Good afternoon, Church. Welcome to our protege. Did you know that everyone at some point in their lives had the urge to quit? To many of us, it started during childhood. Do you still recall when you were still a child? After losing from a game, then with teary eyes, you would sometimes say, Ayoko na. Or probably after an argument with your playmate, you would then say, Di na tayo bate. I don't want to be your friend anymore. And this urge to quit went on to our teenage years. Some would give up a subject they enrolled and then drop it. Perhaps for some, they even quit schooling when things went hard for them. And sadly, there are even those who quit on their dreams and stopped trying. And episodes of quitting persisted even to adulthood. Some quit their jobs, went on to find another, then quit again after some time. Some gave up on their relationships, ending up their friendships, abandoning families and marriages. Some used to go to church, but quit attending, stopped praying, abandoning their faith. And the worst thing that can happen is that some even gave up on life itself and decided to take their own life. And I pray that we would not reach that point, my friend, because I'm here to bring the good news that there is hope. You heard it right. I will say it again. There is hope. As long as there is still breath left in your lungs, and as long as your heart is still beating, certainly there is hope. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10 tells us, Anyone who is among the living has hope. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. See? Hanggat ikaw ay may hininga pa, may pag-asa pa. Along with every breath is the truth that hope is not gone. That's why you are still breathing. You are still alive. Did you know that science tells us that we breathe more than 23,000 times daily, inhaling 438 cubic feet air? It also tells us that our heart beats more than 103,000 times daily. Wow! That is how much hope was given to us daily. Along with every breath is the reality and certainty of hope. My friend, did you know that there is a God seated on His throne and He is the one deciding whether or not you will still have your next breath? Praise God, we are still alive. So why don't we take a moment to appreciate the gift of life? I invite everyone to breathe in and breathe out. Come on, feel the air in your lungs as you breathe in and breathe out. Beginning today, when the urge to quit rises up, let us not give up on life. Always remember, it's not over until God says it's over. Amen. There are some truths about our hope that I would like to share this evening. The first one is that our hope is planned. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it is written, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Since the beginning, it has been part of God's perfect plan to give us hope. You want to know why? It is because the Lord knows about the hardship that we may experience. Alam ni Lord na pwede tayong mahirapan, Masaktan, lumungkot, mabigo, mapagod, o panghinaan ng loob. God knows not only His plans for us, but also about our tendencies to give up, our urges to quit. That's why in His infinite wisdom, He made sure that He will give us exactly what we need in the midst of all adversities. And that is hope. Sinadya niya. This is how much the Lord cares about us. He did not plan for us to be harmed by hopelessness. Rather, He planned to give us hope and a future. Now, the second truth is that our hope is sure. Proverbs 23 verse 18 tells us, There is surely a future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. What a promise. There is no room for doubt. Life may be full of uncertainties, 
but our hope in the Lord isn't one of them. We may not know what will happen tomorrow, but we can be certain that there is a future hope for us. God is not a liar. He is also not pickle-minded who keeps on changing his mind. When he said it is sure, it is sure. That's why whenever we are in our lowest moments, when we aren't sure about ourselves anymore, and we doubt whether we can still make it or uncertain if things will get better, let this biblical truth set us free. Our hope is sure. I will say it again. Our hope is sure. And in relation to this, the third truth is that our hope does not put us to shame. It is written in Romans chapter 5, verse 5. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You see, one of the most embarrassing things that can happen to anyone is to keep on hoping and more hoping only to be left hanging. Yung umaasa ka, pero pinaasa ka lang. What a shame. Have you ever been in such a situation? Just thinking about it can really upset us. Well, this is not the case when it comes to the Lord. God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The presence of hope is the manifestation of God's perfect love for us. Kaya nga, hinding-hindi mo pagsisisihan na umasa ka sa Diyos. You want to know why I'm sure that hope will not put us to shame? Because our hope is not just an idea. Our hope is alive. Hope is alive in the person of Jesus. And that leads us to the last point. Our hope is alive. It is written in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has great mercy, and because of His mercy, He gave us a new life. This new life brings us a living hope through Jesus Christ's resurrection from death. When Jesus was crucified, He died and was buried for three days. During that time, all hope seems to be lost. The game is over, or so we thought. One of the greatest victories in the history of Christianity took place when the crucified Christ resurrected from the dead. Our champion conquered the death, restoring life and hope for humanity. Hope is alive because God is not dead. Next time you feel like quitting or giving up, remind yourself of this biblical truth. We have a living hope. To hope in the Lord is not in vain. Rather, to hope in the Lord is a great gain. No matter how hard is the situation that you are into right now, know that Jesus has risen from the grave to give you hope so that you too can rise up, so that you too can overcome any obstacle. The Lord watches over the lives of those who hope in Him. We will read from Psalms 33 verse 18, But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear Him, on those whose hope is in His unfailing love. And not only that, the Lord is also delighted every time we put our hope in Him. Psalms 147 verse 10 to 11 tells us, His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor His delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear Him, who put their hope in His unfailing love. To put our hope in the Lord is to express our admiration and confidence about God's character, about who He is, and about what He can do. This is why the Lord is delighted, pleased, and honored every time we put our hope in Him. What a joy! So now that we know these truths, I have a question for everyone. What are we going to do now? Well, let me end by sharing these two reminders. First, let us hold firmly. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23 tells us, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Let us hold firmly, because our situation is only temporary, and we should not make a permanent decision over a temporary situation like deciding to quit 
or deciding to give up. Don't you know that what you worry about will come to pass? Yung pinoproblema mo, yung nagpapalungkot sa'yo, yung nagpapayak sa mga mata mo, yung nagpapagulo sa isip mo, at yung nagpapabigat sa puso mo. This is why, after it has come to pass, we would even hear some people saying, Akala ko hindi ko kaya. Kaya ko pala. We already have this hope as an anchor for our souls. This hope is firm and secure. Remain steady. Hold unswervingly to the hope we profess. It's the only thing that we must cling on to. You know why? It's because He who promised is faithful. Finally, the second reminder is to be strong. This encouragement is found in Psalms 31 verse 24. It says, Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. My friend, there will be days when you would not even want to get out of your bed. When you would just feel the heaviness, that feeling when you won't even want to talk to anyone. You won't even want to eat. And that is exactly how the devil wants us to behave. The devil wants us to just sit down and feel sorry about ourselves. But now that we know better, let us be strong and take heart. Every time there is an urge to quit or give up, we won't just simply sit down and allow it to consume our time, our strength, and our joy. No, not this time. Not anymore. Because our hope is in the Lord. We can surely brave any weather, even the fiercest of storms, as long as we put our hope to the right channel. Not by our strength, nor by our might, but by the Spirit of our living God. Like what is written in Romans chapter 15, verse 13, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can be strong because the Holy Spirit will empower our lives with hope. He will fill us with all joy and peace as we trust in Him. Hold firmly and be strong. Never give up on hope. We may get tired and exhausted, but we will not give up on our hope. We may be feeling sad or experiencing pain, but we will not give up on our hope. We may experience failures, but we will not give up on our hope. We may face sufferings and persecutions, but we will not give up on our hope. Quitting is no longer an option. Our hope was already planned, and this hope is sure. This hope will not put us to shame. This hope is alive. Jesus is alive in our hearts, in our minds, and in our souls. Amen. At this point, Allow me to lead you in a prayer. Amazing God, we praise you for you are the God of hope who fills our hearts with joy and peace. Thank you, Lord, for you know our hearts, you know our minds, our strengths and weaknesses, our tendencies to feel exhausted and disappointed, and even our urges to quit. Lord, we are amazed because all along, you have planned to give us hope. There is surely a future hope for us, and this hope will never put us to shame. You are faithful, God. You are alive. Lord, we pray that you will continuously strengthen us and allow us to overflow with hope by the power of your Holy Spirit. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.